Emma's now in Limerick, on the west coast of Ireland. She's discovered that the Franciscan church no longer exists. But she's on her way to see another of Michael Kerwin's altarpieces at nearby St Saviour's, where she's meeting historian Caroline McGee. Hi, Caroline. How are you? I'm really good. How good are you? Good to meet you. Nice to meet you Come too. Inside. It's amazing, pretty amazing, isn't it? Yes. It's really beautiful. How is that everything I'm seeing is by him? The, the big backdrop that you see there, um, that's Michael's work. The carving on the pillars at the front here, that's Michael's work. And uh, it's pretty impressive. So I have some reports about it that'll tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, I'd and love there... to find out. Is there anything about him? There's lots about him, yes. Okay. Lots of interesting things. So what we have here is a newspaper article yep. that was an interim report on the building of this extension to the church. Sometime since we called attention to a magnificent altar in varied coloured marbles manufactured by Mr Michael Cohen of 17 Bolton Street for a Catholic church in the country. We then remarked on the extreme beauty of the design and the elegance of the workmanship. Exactly. I think they're absolutely right. And stated that nothing better of its kind could be produced in any other country. Wow. That's... That, I mean, they, they like him, right? That, that's a, a superb <laughs> testimonial to see him. Yeah, yeah. The general effect of this altar is exceedingly fine and should be seen by those who have any doubt of Irishmen producing at home as good specimens of art as they are known to produce in other countries where their genius is appreciated and rewarded. <laughs> well, are they calling him a genius? An Irish genius. An Irish genius, exactly. <laughs> yes. It's a very Victorian <laughs> description, isn't it? But it's just lovely and it does show you how well regarded he was. They love him. They do. <laughs> <laughs> and now you love him yes. too. <laughs> oh. I love Michael Cohen. So Michael was creating altars probably from the early part of the century, probably around the 1830s. And by then, Irish uh, craftsmen had only begun to start doing this kind of work because right. Catholicism was very much an underground religion. There were a lot of restrictions on Catholics. For a century, Catholics had been outlawed from practicing their religion in public, so few Catholic churches were built. But a series of reforms in the early 19th century allowed Catholics to worship openly, sparking a revival in church building and creating a demand for Michael Kerwin's altarpieces. And by 1866, Michael is a very successful businessman. He has a workshop and a showroom in Dublin. On right. So very big business and by this time, a, a really good example of how um, a Catholic might have achieved a lot during the 19th century. So this article is from 1851. Right. It's to fill in Michael's story for you because, as you can see, it's a very important piece. Manufacture movement. So what was the manufacture movement? So this was a group that came together to promote the sale of Irish goods. The secretary handed in 10 shillings and said he felt peculiar pleasure in proposing one of the most patriotic of Irishmen, Mr Michael Kerwin. He had the talent to wrest from the hands of foreign artists an important branch, the manufacturing of marble altars. So he's as good as any foreign artist. He's as good as any foreign artist. And so Michael became kind of a poster boy for the achievements of Irish Catholics, Irish artists and craftsmen. And he was very, very important to the Irish manufacture movement because they thought he was a real patriot for promoting Irish goods at a time when the church furnishing industry was really dominated by overseas suppliers. Flying the flag for Irish craftsmanship. Absolutely. Is there more to find out? Well, he was based in Dublin, and so okay. I think you should... Back to back Dublin. Back to Dublin. <laughs> <laughs> it's overwhelming, I think, to, to walk in to, to such a gorgeous building in itself. 
but then know that the centerpiece of that that building and a building with a lot of history was made by your four-time great-grandfather. He crafted that and touched it with his own hands. He seemed dedicated to his craft and dedicated to his country and kind of wanted to show Ireland in the best light possible. And that to me seems like a good man. And I needed to find a good man. <laughs>